It's October 13th, See the, or maybe it's October 12th, anyway, it's Monday, so whatever date's closer. I just want to show you first a couple things in this video. A quick update, just how I, how clean I get my reservoir about every three weeks, and then how I do that, and then also um, how to care, take care of thrips. That's actually what I have. It's been a while since I had thrips, actually, um, probably about two years, so uh, I almost kind of forgot what it was, what, what, they, what their gammas looked like, and I have such a little amount of them, it was hard to kind of tell that's what they were. Uh, nonetheless, I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of them. It's, it's, not, it's really not that hard. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to treat my plants too. So hopefully the powdered mildew doesn't come back. And then what I'm going to do, uh, how I told you, I'm going to do outside and spring everything. I'm killing everything outside uh, to make sure that everything has plenty of mildew on it. It's dead. I'm going to round up. Round up everything outside. And then I'll show you a quick update of the plants here. Um, well, you guys, you guys aren't kind of already seeing it, but I'll just show you that real quick first then. They're looking really pretty though. It's just amazing how much they can change though. In a, couple of days sometimes like man the crystals are really trying to pack on ah it's like hard to really trying to get this to focus where you can see it oh yeah look at that nice pretty okay so first thing this is how clean I get it as see nice and sparkly clean and so what I do is I first I let it suck it all the way down down to the down to this where the pumps are just not pumping out any more water I gave them really good watering with that and then I went ahead and I take the wet vac, 12 gallon. It's five gallon is going to be a pain in the butt unless you have a smaller res. But honestly, those five gallons fill up so fast and making a lot of trips. So 12 gallon makes sure I can do it all in one go. I suck all the remaining water out of there until it's nice and dry. Then I take some remy alcohol. I just kind of pour it around the edge. Then I take some water and I use the RO water. You can use whatever kind of water you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I pour the water around the edge too to kind of like you know push all that around. And then I use that water and alcohol water and I scrub with the scrubber. I, I use a um, the kind of bristly ones that are like copper, but you can use whatever, you know, you can use like the green pad ones, it doesn't matter. And I scrub it all nice and clean, the bottom, everything, so it, it's all nice and clean in here. Like there's, it just feels like rubber now, there's no slime at all. And that gets all the slime, sometimes that slime gets pretty thick. And I clean out the filters and everything, take them apart and filter, clean them out real quick in the sink, put them back together. And I clean the hose as well, so it's all nice and clean. That way there's no slime on it as, as well. Clean the plugs, make sure there's no slime on them. And then I, I um, after that, I go ahead and I vacuum it really, really good. Then I take a paper towel and I wipe down all the residue after I vacuum it and then I back it and makes it nice and squeaky clean and then I let it air dry like this for a little while before I fill it back up. Now I'm about to fill it back up with the RO water and then I'll put my nutrients in and everything and turn on and it's all rocking and ready to go. Alright, so with the trips it's pretty easy. Um, oh, another thing I forgot to update here, I knocked this plant over an accident when I was vacuuming. You can see it's kind of tall so these tall things are easy to knock over and I, put the, I, put on, I usually put my hose on the inside here. I accidentally put it on the outside over here and I was vacuuming the stuff over there and, and uh, boom, we just knocked it over and all the rock will fell down over here. There's actually still a piece over there on the ground. It all just fell out, not all of it, but it fell down and uh, I'm sure the plant did not like it at all. So hopefully she doesn't suffer from it much. Um, I'm sure she'll suffer some, but luckily her root system looked mostly in, in intact and her, root hasn't, her roots haven't really spread all the way out to the edge here. Otherwise, nothing would have probably fallen out anyway. But I examined the uh, clumps that fell out and to see if there's any like little micro roots in there. So there was a couple in there. So some of her roots got broken, but not many. So I think most of her root, her root system stayed intact. So hopefully she doesn't suffer much from it. And uh, this is the blue syrup, and I really want this one to produce good. So I really hope she doesn't suffer much from it. You can see the critical, and look, it's doing fantastic back there, getting really big. It's it's the lightest of the ones right now. And so it's either, uh, I, think, I think critical in general is more of a lighter green plant anyway, uh, where, whereas you know something like syrup is more of a darker plant in general. You see the northern lights are doing really good, getting really big. Um, they're getting ready to want to be in these plots here <laughs> really soon, be hooked up into the matrix. Yeah, auto feed systems, I don't have to water them by hand anymore. Nonetheless, um, I'm, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to like increase the feeding yet to them. So I think I'll just leave that the way it is and maybe I'll give it a little extra food if I feel like it needs it, but I think it's doing okay right now. I, you know, it looks good. It might just be a lighter color strain. All right, so um, how to take care of the thrips. Really easy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin layer about an inch layer of sand over all of the tops. It's the same thing you do nets. The reason why you do that is because they have a hard time digging into it and digging out of it. So they lay their eggs inside your inside your soil. That layer of sand over it makes sure they can't crawl up and out. It's like glass cuts them all up. So they're not gonna be able to get out and they'll die in there. And then also I feed with full the full strength peroxide. I don't mean peroxide you buy at the store. You have to buy this stuff at a grow shop or order it online. And it's gonna be cheaper at a grow shop because of, because of shipping. So H2O 28, 29%. That's what's legal, I guess, in my state here of Oregon. So the 29% uh, H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. I take that, 
and I put it at the full strength uh, that it recommends. That is three t three teaspoon or three milliliters, sorry, three milliliters per gallon. So I put it at three milliliters per gallon, and with my nutrients, I went ahead and fed these plants with that, and I'll do that for the next few feedings, and then um, with the sand, I'm gonna put sand on them tomorrow, and then uh, that'll help kill anything that's inside of it faster. And, and it's also just to do that good once in a while anyway. And of course in the tank, I, I like to keep it in there. But now I'm gonna do a full strength. Usually I just do like a teaspoon per gallon. I'm gonna do the full three te teaspoons per gallon for this tank here. And I might do it like that for the next for the next three days, you know, because about every three to five days I'm gonna put peroxide back in there. So I might do that for the next three or four days or so, or three or four times I'll put it in there and then I'll go back to one teaspoon. Uh, that's just to finish these grills out. Actually, I'm only gonna do it one time because it's almost done anyway, so. Um, yeah, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray them. Um, these ones I'm not so worried about spraying. I might spray them with some, um, you know, peroxide water or something like that. I don't know yet. Um, maybe some soapy water. I don't, I don't really want to spray them because they're, they're almost done. And so I think I'm just going to let them go. And I'll, I'll mainly protect these ones. So I'm going to spray these ones with a 3-in-1 Organicide. That's what, it's, that's what it's called. It's called Organicide 3-in-1. And I'll spray them down with that really good. And then a little bit while later, um, before they go into flower, I'll spray them down with the systemic stuff to help prevent the, uh, to kill and prevent the, the powdery mildew. And then also I'm gonna kill everything outside, like I said, I'm gonna, everything is pretty much all dying on its own anyway. I'm gonna spray Roundup outside everywhere, so hopefully the powdery mildew doesn't get brought back into the room again. So hopefully these next six plants won't have to suffer anything, but um, I don't know if you know what thrips look like and what the destruction looks like, but I'll show you on these newer plants. So see these, like, see this little damage right here? It looks almost similar to spider mite damage, but it's more like little lines. And if you look underneath the leaves, you can actually see them. Let me see if I can find one for you. Uh, let's see here. They almost look like little worms underneath the leaves. And you'll see little black specks sometimes too underneath it. There's one right there. Let's see if I can get this one on camera for you. Oops. All right, there it is, okay. I'm trying to show you what it looks like. See right there, moving around? So sometimes they look like larvae, but um, other times you can tell they look more like a, like a flying insect. That's where there are little thrips and they eat on your leaves. So I'll spray them down really good with that organicide and that's going to uh, kill all those and then they won't be able to, you know, they won't be able to mate anymore because of sand. And then uh, all the eggs will die because of the peroxide and stuff. And the sand, they won't, if, they do, if any of you do survive the peroxide, they won't be able to come up to the sand and they'll all die. All right, so thanks for watching the update. Let's look at that plant way in the back there. Oh yeah, look at that. Looking buff. She, she's looking really good. Like, like as far as her structure, I really like it. And she's the one that's growing in 100% perlite. So basically it's like a hempy grow. And also it's an air pot hempy grow. Remember, because I converted that pot to an air pot, have all the bit drills, the holes drilled, and then it has the the, I don't know what that stuff's called, but it's basically the uh, root blocker for outdoors for your grass and stuff. So she's doing really, really good. And this is the same thing. And it's doing really good too. Like it doesn't look like it's going to be as, as big, but I mean, look at the buds are fat. Look at that. I can't get, look at that. Look how much space is my finger here, my thumb here. I can't, like I can barely get it a little bit over halfway around. I mean, this thing is buff, really dense. So even though she only has like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 tops or so, 12. So she only has like 12 tops. She's super dense and big. So I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't also get four ounces. And uh, I think all these three right here are probably gonna get, you know, all these four right here are probably gonna get like six ounces. So yeah, it's crazy, crazy stuff, y'all. Double piece. Double piece. I don't, you, I don't know if you heard it back there, but yeah, it's all right. Bye. Look at that, look at Midget. Sorry, just look at Midget. She's so big. My gosh, she has so many tops. It's crazy, if they, if they even at all buff up, man, she's gonna be such a huge producer. The lighting is kind of weird on her right now. I, think I, 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 I lost my, my cool settings I had, so I'm trying to get them back. And uh, you're not seeing true colors here, so I'm gonna try to get the settings back. All right, thanks for watching.